So, you guys ready to start this off tonight? You guys ready to see some awesome comedy? Yes. We're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. I'm so honored to be up here uh, to, to run this show with some of my favorite local comics. I mean, you guys are gonna love all these people. And our first comic tonight is a great guy. Uh, he's a local actor. He's a kick-ass arm wrestler. He's a two-time Rose Battle champion. Uh, he's amazing. He's funny. You're gonna love him. Give it up for Mark of Apple, ladies and gentlemen. Everything takes me 10 minutes just to get settled. There we go. So, how are you guys doing tonight? Good, 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 good. The so cardinal rule of comedy is that you never ask the audience how they're feeling. The comic is just supposed to assume that they're feeling great and they're happy to be here, right? Another cardinal rule is don't ask them, don't make jokes about them. Right? And asking them how they're feeling, right? So, but uh, anyways, how are you guys doing? <laughs> now you're just messing with me. So, hey, I'm sure most of you guys have been to the dollar store. Anybody not been to the dollar store? Okay, good. We don't have any for <laughs> So, uh, how much do things cost at the dollar store on average? <laughs> about, about a buck. Right? I thought about it. So you'd have to be pretty stupid to not have a rough idea how much something or like your stuff is going to cost when you get to the checkout, right? So I was in the dollar store the other day and it was pretty busy. We're all standing in line and we're anticipating that we could open up another register. And at the back of our line is this lady which is jumping around like a dog on a crack waiting to go for a walk. And she's anticipating this register to open up. And apparently she's one of these people that doesn't know the phrase. I can help you over here, sir, which was me. So she bolts up to the front there and looks back at me at the same time and says, I'll just be really quick. We all know how this plays out, right? We've all let somebody in front of us with a couple items. We know what happens. So she rings in eight $1 items. How much would that come to? About eight bucks. She pulls out a $5 bill. That's all she's got. Not even close. So then she says to the cashier, hey, can you take off two of those $1 Uncle Ben's rice packs? Is that good enough? No. I mean, if you only have $5, stay in the house. Don't even come out. Unless you're coming to a Red Deer comedy show, then that's plenty of money. <laughs> but uh, anyways, the, the, the funny part of the story is that on display at the cash register, they had these crappy little calculators for a buck. Which leads me to another cardinal rule, is that a comic should never tell the audience what the funny part of their story is. Right? Uh, so I was uh, visiting uh, a friend recently in Austin, Texas. And one thing I found about Americans, especially in the South, I don't know, whenever, I, whenever I'm down there and I start saying South, I start to talk with that drawl, and you hang around long enough and then you start talking. But they have this interesting way of being very descriptive with everything. Like uh, when they label and identify things, they draw it right out. So, for example, uh, one night it was pretty cold, and the guy with no hair, I mean, it doesn't take long to get cold. So, we're out one night, and it's like, man, it's pretty cool out, Tom. I could always do it too. Look at the dumbest look thrown at me. What the hell is it, too? Well, it's kind of like, uh, it's like a winter hat. Ah, oh, you mean a fitted head sock. Okay, a little long to get there, but oddly enough, accurate enough, and pretty specific. The next morning, I'm sitting down and have something to eat. I said, can you pass me this cereal? Oh, breakfast cereal. Oh, again, very specific, right to the point. And Apparently, there's also a lunch cereal and a supper cereal, I don't know about. <laughs> but it's quite interesting, actually, and very entertaining watching them talk down there because everything is so descriptive. I mean, try to picture some kindergarten teachers that just smoke a bag of weed having a discussion. That's pretty much what it's like. And that's why I think that holdups in the South take a lot longer than they do in Canada. 
Because in the south, they will draw it right out. They'll come up to you and say, all right, freeze. Put your hands in the air. Now slowly grab your wallet and take the money out of it. And give it to me. Oh, I will shoot you. But as Canadians, we're a little bit smarter. We know this movie. We've seen how it plays out. So we just kind of jump to the end. And we, all it takes for us is to see a gun. And we hand you the money. Like, as Canadians, we don't have time to waste, right? Because we've got hockey tickets. Not ice hockey tickets. <laughs> now, you can really profile, I think, uh, people by what they drive. And I know everybody has some examples, and I've got a couple of mine that I want to tell you about. Uh, so, for example, you can tell that anybody driving a tractor in a small town has pretty much had his license suspended for the UI. <laughs> I lived in a small town, there's a guy that for a full year he drove a, his tractor to the bar just for that reason. But uh, one vehicle that sticks out to me is the older Honda CRVs. Do you know these ones? They're usually in like a brown, tan, gold color or earth tone. And they're usually driven by some senior that doesn't know that the speed limit is actually a minimal. They're almost being, like, usually they're being driven 10 kilometers under the speed limit because they're usually retirees where their full day takes place uh, going to the nursery just for looking for some new shrubs and potted plants, right? And uh, a close second to this is a Subaru Forester, which is usually reserved for lesbians doing yard work, but also has room for the dogs. But uh, I have to say, uh, one that really sticks out to me and is probably the best form of birth control is the Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> now, the Pontiac Sunfire came out in a day where it was targeted at young ladies that they could buy this car right out of school, show that they're making a lot of money, show mom and dad, hey, I'm doing okay financially without mom and dad's help, but hey, don't go too far because I may need some help with some money with this piece it breaks down. And you know you've made it in life when you bought a used Sunfire. Oh yeah, things are rolling now. From my younger experiences, I tend to associate that older Sunfire with that chick you pick up at the bar one night, and then you go back to her place, and it's kind of this apartment that's kind of got this dingy first apartment smell to it, that damp aroma, with a sink full of, uh, weeks full of dishes, and then her match or her bed is basically a match is thrown in the corner and then it's got these stuffed animals lined around it and they all seem to be kind of staring at you yeah a little too much reality for a saturday night don't you think no but i mean you can make almost any car out there equally annoying and uh, useless and all you have to do is slap on some ama caa or any other automobile association sticker you guys know these it's a little oval sticker that they put on the back of the car. And seniors will wear these things like a badge of honor, right? They'll pull out the level and the protractor trying to get in that perfect spot right in the back. And they don't even care about putting it on the window because they know that this is pretty much the last car. So they will put that fucker right on the paint. They're, at this point, they're not care about fading the paint and resale value of the car. Now, to me, this AMA sticker is kind of the equivalent of what used to be the No Fear and the DC Shoes sticker. Yeah, equally as annoying and uh, both fair warning that there's probably some idiot behind the wheel that can't drive in a straight line. Or, uh, you know, it's probably because they're either slowly dying or texting. <laughs> oh, look at all that. Yeah. So is it just me, or is, that, is the Guinness Book of World Records getting a little watered down? Like I remember when there used to be basically 10 categories. You had the oldest man and woman, the youngest man and woman, or the uh, tallest man and woman, the fattest, old, fattest man and woman, the shortest man and woman, and then you had like the longest fingernails and maybe the longest beard and mustache, right? But now it seems like there's a, a category for everything. Like, I'm sure there's like a, as long as everybody gets a participation medal, I think that's kind of where that stems from. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's probably some category, even like, uh, some guy that jerked off to a Sears catalog eight times on a Tuesday. 
one more time, everybody. That was fun.